I want to show one last example of a situation where a Hammett study can provide us with mechanistic insight. And the key is really when we do not know which step of a mechanism is rate determining. In a mechanism where the substrate gives away electron density and then gets it back and may, maybe gives it away again, gets it back again, there are these electron transfers back and forth in organic reaction mechanisms and it can be ambiguous whether the substrate is donating or accepting electron density in the slow step in those complex multi-step mechanisms. Measuring a linear free energy relation allows us to draw this conclusion about whether the substrate is donating or accepting electrons in the rate determining step, if there is a rate determining step. So here, for example, I've got an example of nucleophilic aromatic substitution of this tosylpyridine derivative with ammonia. We can draw a mechanism for this that's basically the canonical mechanism of nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Nucleophile adds in, that's what we call an AD sub N elementary step, and then a beta elimination kicks out the tosyl group, and then a final deprotonation, maybe on workup, gives us the neutral product. Notice that in this mechanism, the substrate is serving in two different roles in the two elementary steps. In the first elementary step, the substrate is serving as an electrophile. We would expect electron withdrawing groups to accelerate that step. But in the second step, the substrate is actually giving away electrons as this nitrogen with negative charge sort of serves as the starting point for kicking out the tosyl group. And so in, in this case, we would expect electron donating groups to accelerate this step. So you can see there's an ambiguity here. What's going to be the outcome of the Hammett study? Well, we don't know. That's why we run the Hammett study in the first place, right? We can orient ourselves by saying, okay, well, I know that when R is H, I'm going to position myself right at the center of the Hammett plot. What are the two possible outcomes in terms of which step is, is rate determining? Well, if the first step is rate determining, the substrate is acting as an electrophile in the slow step. Let's say this step was slow. Well, in that case, I would observe a positive correlation between the reaction rate and electron withdrawing power, right? In the same direction as ionization of a parasubstituted benzoic acid, right? Something like this. And say, you know, rho is less than one, so this reaction is less sensitive than that uh, benzoic acid deprotonation to electronic effects. So this would be the row if the AD sub N step were rate determinant. What if the beta elimination step were rate determinant? Well, in this case, the substrate is acting as a nucleophile on some level, donating electrons, giving electrons away. This means that the reaction would be fastest for strong electron donating groups and the rate would decrease as the donating power of the substituent decreases or its withdrawing power increases, we might say. This would be the situation if beta elimination were rate determined. Which is it? I don't know. That's why we make these measurements, right? So say you, you made these measurements and you obtained data points that led to a line of best fit that was the blue line, we would then conclude that the rate determining step is the first nucleophilic addition step. So I hope this video has shown you that we can get great mechanistic insight from Hammett studies, specifically the electronic nature of the rate determining step in multi-step mechanisms where the substrate is giving electrons away, accepting electrons, and many different types of electronic movements are going on. This is the power and the beauty, in my opinion, of Hammett studies.